Uh, <coughs> we begin our academic session six. We have uh, we, we have this symposium two, the doctrine of karma. Presided over by Professor Gudabari Mishra. Professor Mishra is here. Yes, sir. Yes, Namaste, sir. sir. Good to see you okay. in the morning. Namaste. Good morning, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> coming. Uh, I was a bit late. Okay, so let us begin with the symposium, the doctrine of karma, and the participants are Dr. Subhasini Barik, Pramod Kumar Das, Arjun Raut, Anjana Behra, Arjuna Patnayak. And I welcome all. I also welcome these participants. Let us begin. I. Hand over the mic to Professor Godavari Mishra, and I, I also request Professor Das to say a few words in way of welcome. And he needs no introduction. But yes, sir. good morning, uh, Prabhat, uh, and uh, uh, Namaste to one and all. Um, I have nothing to say. Professor uh, Mahanti has already yeah. welcomed everybody and um, already shown the green signal to begin the academic session number six. I will only request uh, the chairperson, Professor Godavari Mishra, to end the session uh, around about 11.30, sir. Thank you. Over yes, to sir. Professor Mishra. Over to Professor Mishra. Good morning uh, to all of you. To, to, uh, yeah. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Quite audible. I am, uh, I guess, yeah, sir. You are audible. Uh, yeah. Uh, to all of you for this honor to preside over this uh, symposium. I don't want to take much of your time in the beginning. In and through presentations, we shall have discussion. And may I now request uh, the first a uh, scholar symposiast who is going to present to uh, give her uh, give his or her deliberations. Yeah, it starts with uh, uh, Professor Jifidas. Uh, please help out as to who is going to speak first. Uh, so, uh, Doctor Subhasin Bari. Doctor Subhasin Bari. Yeah, is all well known to us from Delhi University. A good scholar in. Indian and Western philosophy, and uh, I wish uh, to give some reflections on our ideas and ideals, ideal of karma in Indian tradition. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Nirachana nibhathaya nitya paramatmane. Balabhadra Subhadra Abhyam Jagannath Hayatana. Good morning and pranam to all who serve as present over here. I express my heartfelt gratitude to the team AOPA to giving me this opportunity uh, for being a symposium uh, for this 34th session of AOPA. Uh, also, my sincere greetings, and it is a, a pleasure for me that Professor Godavari Mishra is chairing this session of mine. My greetings to you, sir. My greetings to uh, all the co-participants, uh, co-speakers, and my greetings to all the participants who are here present for this uh, session. Without taking much of a time, I have to start because many participants are there. So theme of this paper is karma, the fundamental principle of human life and analysis. 
being a karta or the doer i'll sincerely try to put my best effort for the kriya of delivering this uh, uh, i mean kriya all the uh, uh, action series whatever i require for delivering this session which is the goal of today for me at least this paper i am mainly i am dividing into uh, phase one doctrine of karma the historical aspect or as it is presented to all of us and second part is my analysis which is the focus point of this paper i have not written any paper but i am trying to put forth my idea whatever the the way i have understood this particular aspect uh, and uh, i would look for the reflections of others uh, in terms of comments whatever i am trying my best and these are my ideas whatever i understood and i am in a way i am trying to uh, put forth myself as a karta uh, for performing this act or act. i think human life is just like a flow of a river beginning and end both are different in terms of time space and form beginning starts at somewhere and ending somewhere else but purpose is in a way a typical type mixing up with a higher form that is human pursuit human ultimate goal is to uh, 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 have moksha uh, to liberate himself and was the uh, river needs to end with a ocean but with all these difference there uh, with all these uh, similarities there is a major difference which i prefer i say i think that is the consciousness having consciousness consciousness is the uh, uh, aspect which is uh, with all human uh, being human doings are known as karma from birth to death human the person who took uh, take birth uh, at one point of time and towards the end he is a different type of person so oh, though that question is person uh, personal identity is a different thing i am not going to because in philosophy every aspects are having their own philosophy so i am not going into the controversies i am only concentrating on karma hence what i uh, need to say that the commission and omissions are the fundamental principles of human life this is the title of my paper and i i i i i'll i'll analyze uh, uh, how uh, it is possible whether we are coming under that uh, law of causation or we have some kind of freedom to access to uh, to to do something on our own going back to history this theory of karma this concept of karma comes from very uh, early uh, stage in vedic religion that 2000 to uh, 700 uh, before christ era uh, it is mentioned by yagya palka and he uh, it is in vedic culture vedic culture highlight the uh, sacrificing uh, ritualistic aspect of karma and the sacrificing aspect of karma then towards the non vedic uh, era that is particularly uh, buddhism and jainism they highlight they stress on the ascetic aspects and they reject the ritualistic aspect of karma but both of them both vedic and non vedic they emphasize that that ultimate goal of uh, human being human pursuit that is purusartha or ultimate the last goal moksha can be liberated by human performance only both of, uh, uh, it is uh, in a different way in different uh, form they all believe in that uh, this attainment of liberation uh, is through a karmic cycle they uh, they uh, 
they believe in that. In Western thought also, we have uh, seen the, uh, uh, the, the, the analysis of action, whether it is uh, starting with, uh, if I uh, go back to Socratic era, Socrates uh, emphasize on uh, introspection, uh, according to him, unexamined life is not worth living. Aristotle talks of virtuous action. Descartes himself is uh, giving importance to the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, thinking aspect, the uh, mental aspect, Kajito uh, Argosam, I think therefore I exist. So in a way, all these uh, thinkers are giving importance to the human action and though Indian aspect is to inner consciousness, uh, the Western thought is from the outer side, they are trying to analyze the human action in a way. Even if we discuss uh, Indian thinkers like Aravindo, Vivekananda Gandhi, or many more, or the uh, uh, Western thinkers like Wittgenstein, Ryle, Russell, Schopenhauer, or many more, they all are emphasizing on human action uh, and its consequence equally in their own positive way. This uh, concept of action, as I told you, uh, that uh, starts with Yagya Valka's introduction uh, in Brihadaranaka Upanishad. He says, as it does, so it becomes. By doing good, it becomes good. And by doing evil, one becomes evil as he is. As is his desire, so is his will. As is his will, so is his deed. And whatever deed he does, that he will do. This is a quotation from Vedarika. Uh, this is in between uh, for uh, chapter uh, four, four, 5 to 4, four 6. So, Subhasini Tamas talk about the result. Actually, mobile tare karuchi to sit my problem as to chi. Nahi mopakre light, nahi current, nahi sakalu. Onyavane, onyavane, jovane, asandi, please mute yourself. Some of the mute kale, but you think it's his half day karibo. Kebola, here want to, Subasini, want to onyavane mute kari jantu ni jebu. Thank you. Please mute yourself. So uh, now coming back to Indian theories of karmas, normally we discuss three types of karma. That is Sanchita karma, Agami karma, and Prarabdha karma. Sanchita is again of two types. One is Praktana karma, yani ki the accumulated karma of our past life, past or previous life. Kriyamana karma is the accumulated karma from this life. Agami karma is, I mean, the Sanchita karma, I can uh, portray it like the arrows in a quiver. Agami karma is uh, the future yet to come, and this is the arrow out of quiver and yet to, ready to start. And Prarabdha karma is current, yaniki, the ongoing karma, which is already in motion. I have done it. Partly I have done it. It is in motion and target is yet to be achieved. So uh, these three karmas are, uh, 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 as it is discussed in Indian theory, we can keep it in the form of analysis in our Western part as well. Now, the last uh, second part of uh, uh, the uh, paper, that is analysis, 
I am only I am going to focus on the analysis part. Now I am coming back to the theory of causation because we, being a part of part and parcel of this universe, we believe in theory of causation. And theory of causation uh, says every event has its own cause. Ex nihilo nihili fit. Yani ki nothing comes out of nothing. Everything, whatever is happening here, whether it is, whether it is a human action. Whether it is uh, something else, whatever is happening in and around us has its own justification, has a reason, has its own cause. Can we, now question comes, can we put it in that causal aspect, human action, we can we? Normally, when we discuss action, we say action, not event. They are different from event. But can we make it different from this? Uh, universal theory of digestion. Now the question comes over here. But is when we are going for the digestion, causal theory, we have an artist antecedent and we have a consequence as well. We have, I mean, that antecedent, if we are putting the antecedent in a proper <laughs> way, then consequence can be predictable. That is there. Uh, so what's the name? Another sir, three sir. minutes. Another, another? Three minutes. Another three minutes. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. So antecedent part is here. I am concentrating on human being, human action, human performance. Here uh, it is a human being with its primary reason, with its pro attitude, and the, that is the mental factor as well as the uh, physical factor. Whatever he is doing, then the consequence will be uh, the result part. So this antecedent is the primary reason that comes, that builds, or that is that comes in form of desire, intention, and belief, and the act of will, which drives me, drives the doer to uh, uh, have that result. And activity part is basic action. So here, the ante if antecedent part is minus maximum, I believe that performance will can be managed because once you are maximum managing the maximum antecedental part because your if your desire is perfect you are putting the best effort in form of your will then the whatever may be the result at least the person the karta will be satisfied for his performance no matter whatever is the result so uh, that my analysis is that it is it is applicable to every human that we cannot distinct, uh, we cannot uh, define this action because here person specific, here person cannot be, uh, person is a, a conscious, rational agent and he cannot be put uh, like a two, uh, two atoms of uh, hydrogen along with one atom of oxygen making a water, it cannot be done. But if I can put my best effort, even if I'm having the constraints, then also I'm satisfied and that satisfaction is my result, but if it may be the, 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 the visible result may be. So this is in uh, uh, here, if I'm going back to Indian theory, in Indian theory also, Yagya Valka is saying about the self-effort. And this aspect is uh, uh, depicted in form of Two, three, sutras. Uh, uh, let me, uh, which, which, which dis, uh, discuss the Purusatara. Yatha hectana chakrena, na rathasya gati bharvayat, evam Purusatarena, vina daivang na siddhati. As a chariot cannot move with one will, similarly with hard work, destiny, uh, uh, without hard work, even destiny cannot bring the uh, expected result. Second Tvatra, Kata Taliya Bhat Praptang, Dushtami Nidhi Magarataha, Na Swayam Deva Madatte Purusartham Apachetaya. Even if by sheer luck, some treasure is lying in front of you without uh, some effort, self-effort, it is not uh, possible to pick it up. Self-effort is equally required. Uddhamena hi, 
Nahi Suptasya Singhasya Prabhishya Thi Mukhya Mraga. I think yeah, you are talking about yeah, uh, Total, uh, total. So at the, the end of the uh, paper is, we need, as, I mean, uh, if put best effort with all constraints, if I am trying to put my best effort, whatever may be the result, that is with that determined world, I can, I can, I can manage to make a change in my karmic cycle. That is how I can make a difference in my desirable world. Thank you, sir. Uh, so now, uh, shall we open the floor for discussion and questions? Because it is symposium, let us, uh, let us, uh, you know, since it is symposium, I would like to uh, format it in a symposium, uh, you know, pattern. So if it is not uh, objectionable, uh, you decide, you decide. Yeah, okay. okay, sir, sir, thank you. So let us, let us discuss. Like, uh, uh, I wish uh, Subhasini should have prepared a paper, small paper at least, and presented. Then, you know, uh, making a sporadic, uh, you know, collecting and uh, presenting her views because time is very short. And uh, her, her presentation was clear. Let us have a discussion on that. Uh, what she spoke about karma. Yeah. Sir, uh, Professor, sir, please uh, start the discussion today. Uh, like, uh, sir. Well, <laughs> uh, that, that was, that was, uh, sir, uh, one life is not, one life is enough. Sir. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, I will not raise that so question. Very she has, not raise that. She has, she has made it clear. Sir, 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 I would listen to him. Please, sir, go on to. please. Now, please see, there is a question in the chat box. Why we do the karma? Prarabdha is already written. Gajendra Rana asks, Okay, sir, let us start with Professor Prabhu Mahavatra, then we will go to question. Sir, I will take on to Kutti Minji. Okay, okay. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Dr. Barik has presented uh, a clear paper and she, she has also mentioned about uh, Purusakar, which means um, as you so so shall you rip is not an inviolable uh, law, inviolable law. It can be prarabdha, can be prevented by self effort. She has quoted Jagya uh, mm, So, Jatha Yekana Chakrena Rathasya Nagatir Habet Evam Pusakarana. That she has quoted that rightly. So um, um, this uh, the, the, that so she has not made it very explicit, but uh, but what she has mentioned, she has implied that the law of karma is generally objective and inviolable, but not absolutely inviolable because. Apart from Madhrushta, there is also something called self-effort. And by self-effort, even the um, bad effects of your um, karma can be effaced or can be avoided. So that is uh, what she has uh, um, implied. She should have expressed it explicitly, but anyway, that was how I understand 
the paper and i think uh, uh, that was all right and that 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 presents the um, idea of uh, karma uh, like any moral law any moral law it is subject to some um, violations they are not absolutely inviolable so Sorry. also is the law of karma not absolutely inviolable okay. the bad effects or even the good effect, i mean the bad effects of a past karma can be prevented can be okay. prevented by self effort so that was rightly mentioned i think i agree with okay. that uh, position thank, guess, you. Sir. thank you uh, uh, thank you uh, so um, any other question pertinent question that uh, Uh, that uh, relates to her presentation very quick we have uh, yeah uh, can i ask a question uh, Ramabu, please please uh, please yeah. yeah yeah uh, just professor remarked uh, something which uh, i think i should uh, you know ask a pertinent question is doctrine of karma a moral law yeah Uh, a question to me, a question sir, to you. Sir, no, no, not to you, sir. You are not answering. He is asking to everybody. This is very important. His doctrine of karma is a moral law. So it is not to you. Like Subhasin also, it is not to Subhasin. Everybody will come back to that question later. It is a very important thing to discuss. His doctrine of karma has anything to do with the moral law? Like he is trying to bridge between the India and the West. Okay. So Rambabu, I think this question we should. Stop your uh, uh, participation. Good afternoon, sir. I have a submission. I have a yeah. submission. Ah. In response to uh, Professor Maji, Ala Wittgenstein, I may say that the law of karma is not a law, but the form of a law. It is not a law. It is a law of laws. That is a form of a law. So anything regarding karma. Uh, will come under that form only it is not exactly law sir please yeah. unmute sir godavari sir please ah. unmute sir. Like, is it a semblance of law it is it is a form of law means what it is a type <clears throat> of law means it should be a law For, form of law means any any law would be formed according to this format okay 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 very clear as the law law of causality is not a law Law of causality is the form of a law. Very good. Higher causes, higher causes bonding. Yeah. This is the law, and this comes under the law of causation. Very good. Like this. So theory of karma and the theory of causation, uh, Professor uh, Gadas Prasad has uh, you know tried to associate both, and we will go back to this question. Very important question is doctrine of karma has is a. Uh, Uh, like moral law we will come back to that question again any other question now uh, subhasini don't take that all questions are meant for you whatever you know you answer like why why do we do karma prarabdha is already there it is all predestined means we have no where is free will that comes here like you have not uh, touched upon that problem and uh, you know another person this is gajendra babu and another narayan rao so he is asking a question you know we cannot draw a parallel between doctrine of karma and theory of causation which professor das jot now telling if we think on the consequent we have to have an expression we need to take the doctrine of karma to carry on to the past the series of lives how do we see this in uh, in the context of your presentation minach is asking as an astika we are believing on predetermined result the same thing like what is special role in doing action and a bad action Pradhyan has a question. A person without a sense of involvement simply moves his body. Acts. Could we call it action? Involuntary action. That is what Pradhyan meant, isn't it? So uh, now, now over to Suchi Subhasini very quickly. We will go to the next uh, person. Yeah, madam, please unmute, madam. Please unmute. Uh, uh sir uh, uh, due to some constraints i cannot go by uh, one another question no whatever you know in talk like huh. this no, is no actually i not for you as i told you the questions for everybody we will come back to these questions now and then you can take part 
just tell if you want to say something within a minute then we'll go to the next person to be giving his presentation or our presentation Which? Sir, here, here, due to time constraints, I couldn't elaborate much. Uh, much uh, as uh, Professor Mahapatra also said, uh, I need to analyze. Since it is human action, that he will is a necessary aspect. As you sow, so you reap. But here we are giving an importance to you as a doer. Whatever way you sow. you do you contribute accordingly you reap that is the coming result and it is here also we are coming with the act of will within the framework of free will the person work how he intend with intention gets the result so in that way even if we are having prarabdha even if we are coming under the uh, prarabdha then also we have a scope to ex uh, to exercise our uh, uh, our choice which way to go what is to do whether to do it or not to uh, do it whether to uh, accept or to reject it is our choice as a as a rational as a conscious person so here also we are having that quality having that uh, 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 that uh, that uh, scope to exercise what actually you want in future otherwise we will be uh, uh, will be coming under that uh, that uh, just event aspect the way causal theory is we are not we are action oriented we are person and we are rational person so we have a scope to do our best to provide our best and here also whether i mean morality is coming in between here uh, moral because we are just as a moral being we are not only a human person we are a, we are this morality is one of the essential quality sir unmute unmute okay, you are you are making the answer one let me properly try try one question which which is an on involved action is that an action in voluntary action is it an action let us take it uh, with a you know Uh, the larger scope in voluntary action in theory of karma or whatever karma you have told can an involuntary action an action what is your answer sir action for voluntary in no, voluntary action. action you 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 put your hand and mosquito is dead is it an action no they are not in, in strict sense in voluntary this action is a, this is a which stands we shall come back to that question over to the next pre next presentation like you know the, the the somebody hits his hand when the mosquito bites mosquito is killed will that accrue some action now with this question standing where it is we shall go to the next presentation uh who is the next one please uh, uh, next uh, next presenter is uh, sir pramod kumar das yeah hod okay. philosophy nayagad autonomous college nayagad okay okay <coughs> नमस्कार नमस्कार सर एस्टीम्ड चेयर पर्सन वेरी एस्टीम्ड माय रेभर टीचर्स रेस्पेक्टेड पार्टिसिपेंट्स माय लविंग स्टूडेंट्स एंड ऑल लवर्स ऑफ लवर्स एंड सिकर्स ऑफ विजडम i am really very uh, very much grateful to uh, aop for giving me this opportunity please please mute all the organizers should mute all <coughs> this is the secret of abundance we, we have to know this <coughs> anyway i am grateful for um, having this opportunity to share my thought with all of you i have not written my paper i shall i shall write after discussion and my presentation i shall add the comments crit criticisms therefore i have not written so i shall speak uh, only 10 minutes as per the time schedule so my submission is this 10 minutes 
इज फॉर मी आई एम द ओनर ऑफ दिस टेन मिनिट्स दैट मीन्स आई एम द मैनेजर ऑफ दिस टेन मिनिट्स I am a free agent. I have a free choice. I can use this ten minutes in a proper way. I can misuse this ten minutes. If I misuse, then others will stop me. If I cross my time, a stand chair person will stop me. But it is a fact that time is running. Tick 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 tick. Time is running, running. Only already one minute is left. So we cannot ignore this reality that we exist in a particular space and time. We cannot ignore the reality that we, we, we exist in a particular situation, particular context. In that sense, this time is real. But this time is also not real because this time will pass away. After ten minutes, this time will pass away. But that does not reject, cancel out the momentary existence that I now exist. That means I am now a free agent who is going to do something, or now also I am doing something, and I am conscious that I am doing something. I have a responsibility that I what I am doing. That means I am a free agent. That means I am really free. I am really free means I am present in the present. If I am absent in the present due to any reason, due to my past memory, due to my preoccupied thoughts, due to my philosophy, due to my conviction, due to my likes and dislikes, and if I am disturbed by the future expectations, plannings. Then I am absent in the present. This is the secret of our karmic bondage. What we do that separate thing? At least be free to do something. What you do that will invite the consequence. So the consequence is not matter. What you do that matters. And for doing something, you have to be present in the present. And the diversity is also not overlooked. The jagat is neither negated nor ne not nor neglected. The jagat is there. Ninety participants are now listening to me. Remaining in different places, they are all real. They are all sensitive. They are they are they are men of wisdom. But I don't see them, and I can't see them. So that diversity is there. That empirical world is there. But I am not. I have don't have time to speak about to 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 be concerned about that diversity because only ten minutes and two minutes, three minutes are already left. Time is running, and I have to do my work. I have to justify the topic. So. What the one should remain present in the present means one should not be trapped by the past memory or past preoccupied thoughts, even not by philosophy. That is also bondage. Our philosophy is also our bondage. The entire life is lost for one ism, that follower of one ism. Philosophy should be very open to all. This yes, this 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 is this is true for one perspective. That is true from another perspective. Indian philosophy is 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 relevant from Indian perspective. Western philosophy is relevant from Western perspective. They are all perspectives. So my philosophy should not be my bondage. I I cannot spoil my entire life with an ism, theism, atheism, pragmatism. Not this. If I am present in the present moment, that is existen existential ism. If I value my present time, that is pragmatism. If I value the context, that is contextualism. That is practical ethics. So, the secret of karmic bondage is that 
we should, we should that is the ignorance ignorance is the secret of karmic bondage that we should not ignore the importance of the present moment remaining in the present i am roaming in the past or in future landing in the present my mind is roaming in the past and future professor prafulla mahapatma kumar mahatma my reverend teacher beautifully he speaks that this life is enough there is no need of uh, speculating the future life the past life this life is enough so this moment is enough this momentum response my my response in this particular moment will determine the next moment's existence momentariness momentariness does not reject that the world is unreal everything exists for a moment and that momentum existence is important so the secret of karmic bondage is that in the bhagavad gita karma should be backed by right knowledge and right feelings jnana karma bhakti samucha karma is not a mechanical exercise like atm machine even not like the animals activities so right knowledge should be there right feelings should be there so gyana karma bhakti these three are integrally necessary for doing any action otherwise you cannot do niskama karma right knowledge is necessary and that is the knowledge of the dialectics that is the knowledge of the all possible perspectives that this is true from this perspective and that is true from that perspective the entire bhagavad gita is full of dialectics here the unmanifest is accepted and the manifestation is accepted here kamo as a purusharth is accepted this kamo is accepted here attachment is accepted and detachment is accepted here khero is accepted and akhero is accepted here dharma as a universal value is accepted and so dharma is accepted uh, so pramod baba another 2 minutes yes sir yes sir so that that so that 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 knowledge is necessary knowledge of the metaphysics knowledge of the ontology is necessary for doing our so dharma for doing our action in a particular context without that without that we cannot be free from karmic bondage and right feeling right feeling means my commitment my commitment for 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 the values commitment for my action commitment means there is no compromise in my understanding that's that my mind should be really rational means it must be open to all perspectives so my point is that whatever we take as the action that is a mistake we mistake the reaction as action the question is whatever i am doing is it an action or a reaction really it is the reaction of uh, maybe maybe it should not be the reaction many times 90% of our actions are the reactions of our anger reaction of our greed reaction of our jealousy reaction of comparison many many reactions you did something what you did not do an action you just reacted and we take that reaction as action so I one should un- i think we should stop pramod babu uh, time is up we will go to we will come back to you and i would i would like one question on his presentation only one question so far See, we are collecting questions. First question is: Is theory of karma a moral law? Second, does involuntary action accrue karma? Two questions we have collected. One more question if from this presentation we can have. We will discuss that a little later. Yeah. Sir, can I put a question? Yeah. Yeah. Sir, my my feeling is, what a person does, he is the agent. and he is not going to en- enjoy the fruit of his action it is the society that will enjoy the fruit of his action if somebody is a good doctor his action will be ob- will be by his action society will be benefited if does something bad then the society is going to be 
<coughs> harmed by that so our individual actions also influence our social life and our social existence that is one aspect and the second as and the second point that occurs to my mind is that <coughs> that in a our social situations are such that to to justify some social evils or social ills we have our thinkers of that time have introduced this notion of past life pa past karma okay. all that i think uh, dhanesh prabhu apan ko question ta it is very clear the question is does altruistic action form a part of individual karma and how to explain it i think we should uh, stop there the good one question sir one question yeah okay okay the, sir, uh, sir, uh, राइट Okay, okay. This is a, this is a. Okay, then Jayanti, please very quickly. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Actually, my question is that uh, when you said that uh, uh, in continuation with the previous uh, uh, speaker, uh, yes, uh, who decides what is right, and then you said that uh, uh, am I free to decide my uh, nature of action? So when the objective laws are there, and how much free I am? so that is my question uh like uh, 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 does the individual has freedom to decide his action as to whether yes. it is good or bad that is your question yes okay. sir so uh, with these questions let us not go to the answers we will come back to the answers uh, uh, professor das pramod kumar das we will come back to the answers little later now next presentation next presentation please the next presentation is arjun raut lecturer in philosophy udyanath autonomous college of science and technology odaspur okay um thank you all good morning to all my special <laughs> thanks to the executive members of aopa for giving uh, me the babu, opportunity arjun babu like uh, since the time is very short okay okay sir about this uh, you know addressing the huh. okay sir go to the topic uh, my um karma in the gita the bhagavad gita is an authoritative hindu scripture the upanishad brahma sutra and the gita form what is called the prasthana traya or the threefold authority no system of hindu thought is considered orthodox unless it is based on them the bhagavad gita <coughs> offers a classic exposition of the philosophy of action expounded in form of a dialogue between lord krishna and arjuna in the battlefield the situation is representative of any existential dilemma where the human agent is torn between alternatives it is a situation of either or where of one does not know how to go about things and is caught up in a moral impasse it is a state of indecision whether the human mind is clouded by alternative moral considerations it might be argued that in a normal existence situation the individual has to choose from among the many alternative ways of acting but unlike this arjuna has to choose between action and non action whether he is to fight the battle or lay down arms thereby resorting to non action in this respect the situation chosen by the exponent of the gita is not a representative of a typical moral dilemma it should be pointed out that whether to take up arms or to lay down arms is not to choose between action and inaction 
but is a decisive choice between one kind of action and another for not to fight here is also a kind of action which lord krishna would not approve of indeed the whole of the gita is a testimony of lord krishna's attempt to persuade arjuna to act as if it is worthy of him to do so when action is called for it is potently the case that non action is a case of bad action arjuna considers non action to be preferable to action because if he fights either he wins or he loses in either case the consequences are equally disagreeable he is aware of the truth that every action has its inevitable consequences and by doing the action the agent remains bound to reap the consequence of action he is also conscious of the fact that moral agent is free to act in a way he prefers or decide to act and in doing so he owes the responsibility of the consequence of the action he is overtaken by despair when he thinks of the kith and kin special the women who shall be forced into udokur and which eventually would pollute the race the law of karma purpose to assume strict uh, determinism with regard to human actions and their consequences as there is no caprice or arbitrariness in the functioning of the course of nature there is no fallout or deviation in the action reaction uniformity in other words the karmic law is as objective and universal as the causal law man performs actions and is determined by them he is so to say born on account of his deeds after being born he again goes on moving around in the world with the result of his previous deeds this is how he goes on reaping the consequences of his past deeds in the ceaseless cycle of existence sansara till the final dissolution as objections events are subject to certain fixed laws or uniformities so are the human actions the human body being a part of nature is subject to the laws of birth growth decay and extinction that every living organism is here to and the human actions are subject to in explorable laws now the pertinent question would be is the karmic law different from kind of causal law or it is a extension of that letter some would hold the view that they are not different in kind except that in case of natural events the antecedent do not include the human agent whereas in case of action the human agent is the indispensable and the determining factor in bringing about the consequent to begin with freedom of will is presupposed in all discussions about morality it is the presence of he will that makes an action a case of voluntary action for which the accountability is fixed on the agent or performer of the action in the gita krishna having expatiated upon the dynamics of karma as arjuna to think and take decision in his own the free will again presupposes a distinctive of the human species it is only the humans who have the capacity to discrimination between right and wrong pleasurable and preferable it is rational discrimination which efforts one to right knowledge that in turn enables him to do the righteous action it is the discriminative intellect on account of which the agent can transcend the karmic bondage and use karma as a veritable means of liberation it is by this unique ability that the ordinary actions are transmuted to non attached actions nishkarma karma law of karma has also the necessary presupposition of the continuity of the agent which means that the agent has re incarnate itself in different bodies to reap the consequence of action the karmic bondage therefore not only means that the present is tied up with the past but also that the nature of actions in the present <coughs> make us bound to a particular life pattern in the future thus karma is a transcendental basis of moral life would require rebirth 
is it necessary postulate or coronary in order to make the things clear uh, before life and after life is significant the immortality of soul is assumed the gita very explicitly explicitly observes that birth and death are phenomena that are true of psychological organism whereas the soul is not subject to mutation and extinction this type of body that is chooses after death depends on the samskaras or the resultant of the action performed in the past the critics of the karma doctrine very often pointed to a riddle pertaining to action and deliberation on the one hand and the law states that action good or bad do bind the individual to the respective consequence the agent enjoys or suffers according to the action sa virtuous or your time is up bhai sir yes. okay sir my submission is that um do the action selflessly so that um lokasangraha can be uh, attained and liberation can be attained okay, so professor uh, raul has uh, raised a very good question is karmic law a causal law and uh, that question stands along with other two three questions and we'll come back to that and any one question from the participants one question uh karmic laws are uh, actually a um, type of there is no causal connection but um, um, there is some type of uh, relation because uh, in um uh, prarabdha karma we are leading the life accordingly but uh, we can change we can change um our future by doing right actions so there is no necessary connection the paper presenter sir the paper presenter okay 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 sir okay any other question i want one question from the participants if there are there is any hello i have already asked one question an ordinary yeah. man an ordinary yeah. man who is involved in karma always uh, say a dalit a tribal uh, a worker a peasant without knowing the theory of karma whatever he does ye comes mane ko porjare eta jibo taku ame karma kahiba ki nahi karma ro jo nirdishto definition deya jauchi e semananko kam ta ta bhitre jibo ki nahi the productive forces like those who are involved in productive activities dr upadhyay yeah i would like to answer your question saying <laughs> no one does any karma by presupposing a theory given or you know by uh, by analyzing a theory and then acting that is not whether a dalit or a non dalit nobody does so like uh, every karma is a karma we are talking the about karma from a higher uh, like a ontological perspective as to what is that is karma that is given to this indian tradition in such a way and what is its uh, like can we really uh, stand by the theory of karma that which is a very peculiar to indian tradition is what we are talking so question is well taken but i don't think that this needs an answer from the speaker let us go to the next presenter we'll come back to the uh, uh, sir yeah. next uh, next presenter is uh, miss uh, anjana behra uh, she will yeah. present on karma core value of hinduism she is a lecturer in philosophy fm junior college baleswar very good morning thank you thank you sir a very good morning to one and all present in this intellectual gathering of 34 annual conference of all odisha philosophy association i convey my heartfelt regards to esteemed president vice president organizing secretary members of aop chairperson of symposium 2 co-participant of all invited guests faculties of philosophy and students it is proud privilege on my part to be a speaker on symposium so it is my foremost duty to express my heartfelt thanks 
to all the organizers or and members of all Odisha Philosophy Association. I would like to present my paper on the topic karma, the karma value of Hinduism. Karma is primarily a core value in Indian ethics. So is the case in the Bhagavad Gita in which it is systematically explored. Its essential concern is with men and men's actions in the world and with how those actions affect his future life and progress. This ethical trust adds a new and practical dimension to Hinduism in general and the stages of the Gita in particular which up to this time we have a viewed a metaphysical and epistemological theory. The core value can be mostly easily seen in the Gita. The root word of the term karma is crew, which means to act or to do. The action may be of the past, present or future. Any kind of intentional action, whether mental, verbal or physical, is regarded as karma. It refers to an action performed with a definite purpose, the result of which either good or bad or mixed, sooner or later. The term karma is used to refer a volitional act as well as the forces that arise from, the, from these acts. In its ultimate sense, karma means all moral and immoral actions. Karma is the sum total of our acts both in the present life and in the preceding birth. Karma means not only an action but also the result of an action. The consequence of an action cannot be conceived separately. It is part of an action and cannot be isolated from it. Without, without human body, there can be no action. No one can no one live a life without doing karma. Human beings are bound by karma. If you are born, you have to perform karma. In the next, in the context of Bhagavad Gita, karma may mean conscious action or thought or sacrifice or duty or self-surrender. The word karma may appear to be small, but its meaning is very vast. It is neither beginning nor end. Law of karma occupies the central position in Indian philosophy as well as Bhagavad Gita. Karma is responsible for the entire chain of cause and effect. The concept of rebirth, mokhya, sansara are closely associated with the principle of karma. The doctrine of karma provides causal explanation for the phenomena of life. Karma does not mean past action only. It embraces both past and present deeds. It governs the universe and all being within it. It acts impersonally and binds its jiva to the world and in addition to the cycle of transmigration. According to the law of karma, a person's individual collective actions determine the nature of his or her future existence in the present life or in the future life. The effects of her karma may be experienced immediately or in some later time in the life of an individual or may be accumulated in the future rebirth. The past is the initiation of the present and the future. No one can free from the result of karma. Karma distinguishes one person from another. Good actions contribute good karma and future happiness, while bad actions contribute bad karma. Karma is the store of good and bad actions. Soul is considered immolar, immortal, but it moves from one body to the other, from life to life to enjoy or suffer, the consequence of karma. Human desires are unlimited. The desires are fulfilled through actions. The actions may be good or bad as per the nature of the action. The consequence follows. The consequences are to be enjoyed or suffer in the present life or in the next life that follow the present life. The doctrine of karma is very accurate. The result come out in accordance with the inputs. But sometimes good consequence may follow even without proper and good uh, actions. Anjana, I, I think your time is up. You can take another two minutes. But if there is a special point that you would like to highlight, please do. Because most of it already has been spoken by others. Like there is no point in, uh, you know, uh, re uh, narrating all that has been spoken. So if, if there is any special point that you would like to highlight, one minute for you. 
because time is up we have no i have been asked to uh, wind up this session by 11:30 we can take 11:40 but not more than that yes anjana thank you sir when alone is responsible for his actions and the consequences that follow from the actions he creates his own destiny to enjoy the fruits acquiring out of the good consequence he needs to carry on good actions good actions produce good result and bad actions produce good, bad results so this is unchangeable so according to indian scriptures karma can be brought into three categories that is sanchita karma prarabdha karma wow. and kriya mana karma like then, uh, anjana i again like my request to you is if there is anything special that you want to present speak about that like these are all things spoken or you stop will go to uh, the question answer please like don't mistake me because you know time is uh, there is time constraint and if there is anything new because the same sanchita prarabdha to everybody speaks we cannot have there are so many things to speak about karma okay when an action is performed for the welfare of others without any selfish motive it is called karma yoga in karma yoga action is performed for the welfare of the others thank you sir to sum up we can say that from social point of view karma is performed with the moral rules and ethical codes believe that hold the members of the society together only righteous action can serve this purpose and thus karma is a way of living and behaving in the society karma is the scheme of values so hindus believe that karma is not a theory or doctrine it is the law of universe if the principle of karma are not abided by properly and the right and rituals not performed correctly it will lead to chaos and <coughs> disorder of the society and eventually the individual in it will come to an end this is why karma is conceived to the core value of hinduism thank you sir okay 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 uh, like uh... Uh, Anjana, um, thank you very much. And uh, you know, uh, she wanted to highlight at the end uh, about karma yoga. One thing, Anjana, I wanted to uh, like. I don't know whether the clarification or my uh, intervention. You told that karma has no beginning, no end. I think okay. it has no beginning, but it has an end. And mukti karma comes to an end. That is the standard Indian philosophical. interpretation with this the floor is open for questions one question because we will go to you know very interesting things are coming up and we will go for a, like 10 minutes discussion and uh, now one question sir there are two question in the chat box okay human karma are only responsible for the results or another circumstances are responsible for results Okay, what is your answer? Like, or another circumstances, you know, karma is responsible for results, or another circumstances forms a part of the human action also, na. So, uh, Amrita, this is like uh, circumstances also uh, like uh, go along with the uh, karma, human action. So, the human action is not uh, solitary, independently done with the circumstances in which it is done. so that is the answer and dipak kumar behra what is the difference between karma vadi and bhagya vadi do you have any answer for this what is the difference between bhagya vadi and karma vadi very quick answer uh, bhagya vadi means it depends on uh, bhagya but it do not come action properly but karma vadi uh, it doing the action that, properly na nah, okay i think karma vadi and bhagya vadi are one and the same okay uh, deepak babu uh, let we shall have some more discussion that is my view uh, like let us go to the next presentation let's go how many presentation sir uh, this is the last presenter uh, uh, is uh, dr shrimati archana patnayak lecturer in philosophy satya sai women's college bhuvan sir uh, she will be present on the karma the internal enzyme okay uh, 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 Dr. Patnaik, Archana, you, uh, please avoid addressing all of us for five minutes. You know it takes a very long time. That I thank all that. Please avoid and uh, please avoid all that has been spoken already. Lakhona, Lakhona. Something new. Enigma, enigma. We can save time. Okay. So it is an opportunity to present the paper. 
on the theme doctrine of karma uh, respected chairperson of aopa and all the members of aopa and all my teachers and dignitaries uh, my paper is on karma um, the word karma comes from the sanskrit kri uh, traditionally it is said that what we saw so shall we reap the theory um, uh, or idea of it is uh, originally used to refer to the conscious being uh, only humans because uh, they can um, act so human beings are the moral agent they are uh, have intentions uh, uh, in their action but animals or inanimate objects activities are not moral are not governed by any moral sense of responsibility responsibility is inbuilt into the concept of action but here karma has been taken in a narrow sense when we say that the agent who does the action will also suffer from its consequences if it is not in this but then it will follow him in the next birth so um uh, here uh, i am uh, tra- Uh, uh, trying to uh, so that we are responsible for our action here i am trying to present the doctrine of karma in a modified sense with reference to sadguru karma means action which action it is my action who is responsible for this it is my responsibility if you understand this simple formulation karma will fall into place just um the way i am right now is of my making can i can i intervene who is the sadguru there are so many sadgurus uh, ankul chandra with reference to ankul chandra so no, uh, chandra because jagi jagi uh, uh, prophets are saints are there okay okay so go ahead so um For every action we perform, there is a consequence. Whether the consequence be our fruit today or tomorrow or ten years later uh, is irrelevant. The point is that it always bears fruit today or um, uh, so. Some deeds one performed unconsciously many years ago may have their consequence today. Fate is the unconscious um, uh, creation. It is extremely important that. Every aspect of one life, one's life, happened consciously. According to Sri Sri Thakur on Kul Chandra, in your every condition, just try to understand his blissful will with eyes on the Supreme Father. Work on his will, his fit, and unconscious life seems to be easy because one does don't have to do anything other than that life by our patterns and compulsions. But an unconscious life. Who will not unfold the way uh, one wants it to? A conscious life will unfold in the best possible way for us. The significance of karma is that it means that none of one's identity is derived from beliefs, ideologies, religions, and systems of morality. All of them are capable of constant evolution. If karma means taking complete responsibility then what is grace what is the role of divine in our life is karma a denial of god no it is not let's look closely what do we mean what do we use the word divine uh, by the divine we mean the source of creation where is the source the uh, answer is it is within you and we are responsible uh, like the um, um musk deer uh, the the kasturi is present in its nafi but it is searching it outside and in this way falls on the trap of the hunter thus if we know only the physical life uh, live in a particular way if we know the mental and emotional dimension of your life uh, we will live a deeper life but if we touch the very source of life uh, we it is available for grace so the entire life becomes divine the one thing every seeker needs to remember is that the inner journey can be undertaken by alone the realization uh, is something sometimes scary but those who are used to living in groups uh, making collective life decisions uh, here uh, one can work together in the outside world but in the inner world 
everybody walks alone for example uh, a yogi, yogi was walking through the forest he met a dakat this dakat has a reputation for looting and murder he was about to strike the yogi when the yogi asked why are you accumulating this terrible karma he answered that to support my family i am responsible for my uh, wife children and old parents i have to kill you yogi said if you are doing this for their sake it is also time you found out that is they carry your burden of your karma please go home and find out uh, arjuna wind up wind up please wind up Yeah. Okay. Uh, time is running out. Just, just say your conclusion. Yeah. Just say your conclusion. Yeah. Just come to your conclusion. Just you one or two sentences. Repeat. Are composed of five bodies: the physical body, mental body, and energy body, and etheric body. and bliss body karma is primarily implicated on the first three levels and the there is misconception about karma yoga has to is uh, to think that uh, karma yoga means unrelating action this is not true karma yoga is not about being busy it is instead about engaging in the kind of activity that frees you and about performing the kind of action that leads one uh, to your own higher nature uh, and secondly karma yoga means social service that is uh, a karma yogi is a do gooder it is a wrong concept mere service is not karma yoga karma yoga has nothing to do with what type of action you perform but rather how you would do even good deeds can be performed compulsively uh, so rather uh, this can lead to even uh, this uh, can lead to entanglement rather than liberation if action creates bondage it is karma if action creates freedom it is karma yoga if you perform action miserably it is karma if you perform action joyfully and effortlessly it is karma yoga it uh, it become so becoming a karma yogi does not mean you have to give up whatever you are doing uh, right uh, doing create a more joyful doing right now it means you do it with whole hearted involvement and in the process helps to create a more joyful world where you go so the basis of karma um, karma falls in into two sets uh, one by either by acting with awareness or by acting with total abandonment if you can do it with both you are liberated and awareness is a far deeper dimension awareness is inclusiveness a way of embracing the entire existence abandon means the that your involvement has become so intense that you are willing to abandon yourself this is about one self so in a, uh, the basis of karma yoga is to involve the process not the product karma yoga reminds us that action never a problem it it is expectation of the fruit of action that causes suffering uh, if um, when you simply enjoy what you do work it as whole heartedly there is no question of suffering at all uh, <laughs> uh, prophets are materialized living embodiments of the way to heaven hence man can seldom approach god by them so only human beings who is utterly blissful would be able to recommend renouncing the fruit of one's action repeating a scriptural truth without an inner experience of it is futile exercise okay i think uh, you have you have been made a point so according to sadhguru okay you have said concept of lifetime complete it come to the conclusion okay thank you just living moment karma um, in the conclusion i found that karma has multifarious aspect uh, think it in terms of just living moments a, uh, a balanced existence is a blessed life uh, through yoga and meditation one can achieve this thank you sir uh, okay <clears throat> archana thank you very much you have some points uh, like uh, sorry we did not have uh, enough time to give you Uh, for your presentation, but she has made a difference uh, between karma and karma yoga. Karma yoga leads one to liberation, whereas karma binds the person to the world. Uh, that is what uh, I understood. I am not very well acquainted with the philosophy of uh, uh, Sadguru, but but however, it is a good presentation. Thank you very much. You thought from a very different uh, perspective. 
And now let us open with uh, some questions that we have already got. Mm, and uh, <clears throat> uh, like a first question, like I bring back. Can we have another 15 minutes, Professor Das? Ji, no. Uh, 15 you can minutes. have. Yeah. You can, you, can have, you can have 15 minutes. But one thing, one thing, Brother Shu. I no, let us try to finish it within 10 minutes because uh, I, we have other functions. It is a very important thing that we are discussing. We are uh, putting, trying to understand karma like many people have been. Like, I, I, uh, excepting two of them, none of them have prepared papers, but I wish uh, they should have prepared papers. And let us take two, three questions. Like uh, from the presentations that we have had this morning, like uh, the question which uh, Professor Maji asked, that uh, is theory of karma a moral law? Like uh, two interventions we shall have is theory of karma a moral law, and does involuntary action accrue karma? Let us take these two and two two. And like a, uh, yeah, your presentations like intervention stool. Yeah. Is theory of karma a moral law? Professor, I would I would request to Professor Saraj Mohanty to speak on it because he has a, a, he has a written a lot about Okay. Uh, yeah. Is there are various translate uh, karma by the karma uh, we say it theory, some say call it law, some call it doctrine. So the different in English translation, we see, use these words. Karma is you know, these these words are used. Karma, doctrine, law, or rather principle of karma. So these are the different ways of saying. But everything has a problem. Every way, any any of these way of describing karma has a problem. So it's a, the question is whether it's a moral law. Definitely, it is intended to be. A moral principle. It is. It is um, posited to explain the responsibility of human beings for their actions. So, uh, in that sense, it is a moral. It is something on pertaining to morality. Karma. You know, there are many presuppositions of karma doctrine. One is that man is responsible for his actions. We are the, for the which the consequences karma follow acquires to him. The other there are many other presuppositions. We can question or we can re-examine those presuppositions. Rebirth is another. Someone has also raised this question. Uh, rebirth is another presupposition of this karma, of this doctrine. The, so, uh, the, if you take away these presuppositions, if we, these critical if we exam examine these things, then they, they would all, uh, the karma doctrine fails to stand on its own. Okay. Uh, there are many points on which we, we can debate. We don't have time. For I, I, and, uh, now let us go to the next. Uh, uh, like, uh, now, that is an important know. question also in this regard. Can it ah. be regarded as a categorical imperative? Ah, that is a very important thing, yes. What, what is your, uh, how do you look at it? Can it be seen as, like, can we take it in the sense of categorical imperative? Yeah, Professor Mohanty. Categorical imperatives are commands or, or imperatives. Exactly. Here we are not concerned with that kind of thing, categorical no, I, or hypothetical. One line answer is enough. I, I don't want uh, more. Uh, Professor Mahapatra, anybody would like to speak about this? Is theory of karma a moral law? I thought that was uh, a very crucial question which uh, Ramo asked and uh, my answer to this is very brief. It is a causal law and it is a, a causal law applied to the sphere of morality. So okay. you see, action, freedom and responsibility. These are the three things which are interconnected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk of moral accountability of actions because people act 
freely. I mean, yeah. generally freely. So yeah. that way, you can say that it is a moral law. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, well, sir, I agree with you, and uh, that is the standing of the Indian tradition. Like, uh, a, a, like uh, the theory of karma is a moral law. It is a moral it, law. It, yes. The karma that is presented to us, the theory of karma is a moral law. It can be contested mm -hmm. so by yes. taking the semantics into consideration. We can contest. Next question I come to is: Does involuntary action achieve karma? It is, it is open to everybody, Ranjit Babu and others. Does involuntary action cause karma, accrue karma, result in karma? It does not. <clears throat> I like it. That is what Professor uh, Ganesh Prasadda says. It, is, it does not. Involuntary, uh, involuntary action cannot come under the purview of law of karma. Because okay, it is, that is, is mostly that psychological is, in nature. Yes, that, is ah, yes. that, is, that is his view. Another view? I, I have something something on Archana's uh, paper. Archana mentioned about um, the role of God also. Now here I have a uh, difference huh. to allow God to be the dispenser, dispenser of justice. Then huh. this, uh, this will take away the moral responsibility part of the law, because uh, the law sir. is a moral law, and sir. God takes uh, care like of everything. Uh, man like your question is good, response. your intervention is very nice, but in Indian tradition, we have brought in the concept of God as the dispenser of karma. I'll come to that. Professor, like Mishra, I, I, Professor Mishra, in Indian, that was the question um, discussed yesterday also. Indian philosophy, not all of them. Not all of them. Not all. Of them. Not all of them. The not even Naya, Naya does not accept the no. role of even God in the doctrine of karma. Even so, Mimamsaka has their own. Okay. Uh, any, any other? Uh, hey, Godavari Shavu. Godavari Shavu. Ah. With regard to your query regarding who is Sadhguru, Arthana said ah. that he is uh, Anukul Chandra, but he is ah. not. Sadhguru is somebody else uh, belonging to Maharashtra. And uh, Jagi. He is branded as Sadhguru and many YouTube uh, videos are available on the head of Sadhguru. Ah, so, so there is a book by Sadhguru. Sadhguru. He has quoted Sadhguru and has said many things over it. But she is trying to deal with the philosophy of Anukula Chandra. So, uh, so friends. No, no. Uh, he has referred to both Sadhguru, Jagi Manga, Jagi, Jagi Vasudev, and uh, he has mentioned both. And okay. there is a book by Sadhguru that is uh, to who is she was. But is it a crucial question to the law of karma, Sadhguru or not? No, no. Oh, no, no, no. He is bringing out. No, never. His heart. Never, never. Yeah, never. So, <clears throat> so thank you very much. We will have another few minutes. Just let me put up my yeah, uh, whatever I wanted to say. Like, you know, uh, when uh, Subhasini started, like, on, an unexamined life is not worth living. She emphasized on the ideal of karma, like action. In, in, in Socratic and Greek tradition, where you do not find anything on karma, you know. But as we have seen the Vedantic tradition, this uh, whether the Jivan Mukti is possible or not possible, whether man should get liberated when he is alive or not alive. The Prarabdha Karma plays an important role. The Prarabdha must end for the person to get liberated. There, there are two things that even within Advaita, there are some who do not accept Jivan Mukti. They say that the body has a product of karma should like a fall off for the liberation to come. But the pra the, there is another view that Prarabdha has some compassion for the person. He has to work. This is a Bodhisattva given with the concept which is being you know, yologized in our tradition <clears throat> and that is how the karma keeps body running till it falls off. And you know, this uh, one of the very important things I wanted to present before you all in the tradition of in Indian tradition of Charaka, 
who was a great follower of uh, panchashikha and uh, samkhya school he says you have been talking about karma all these days no karma will bring you disease and death and all that i will find out a system which can do away with this karma thing charaka is the first one to you know karma whether karma was there in the vedas is a still questionable thing you know pardon yeah this is charaka the charaka says that i my medicine will be so good that you can do away with karma and live as long as you want and this uh, this uh, then comes you know the the, the tribal um, uh, conception of karma many tribes believe that their poor fathers are still alive and they 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 they, they believe in their their, their ideal of karma kalidasa is very important thinker he says you know in his kumara sambhava that when the teacher was coming and teaching parvati he says that all the earlier vidyas that she learned came to her automatically without without prodigy that she was a child prodigy she could know everything from her past karma she has learned and you know vayate vidya karma savanvara vete purva pragya cha there is a line in brother nega concept which says when the man dies all these things go along with him to the next life you know there was a, all of you might be might have heard i had heard maybe i had had a near death experience was almost he was dead for some time and he came back and he has spoke about it like uh, you know we have heard about it i i, I have no past and experience about uh, these things so uh, uh, coming to the moving one's body involuntarily which pratya asked is a very important question jainad say that even if you involuntarily do something wrong it will accrue you karma jaina say that therefore all types of precautions must be taken to see that no karma is accrued even in involuntarily vedant is go to the other extreme they say you don't have i and mind you can do any karma still you can kill you can kill your kid and kill nara na karma nityate nare so then you know that that is what that is where he said but but, like, uh, but what about mandabyo what about mandabyo uh, what about mandabyo ruchi he did something he did something uh, um, in the childhood but he was not punished for that he was pardoned mandabyo yeah hmm what where is mandabyo doing, 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 doing something involuntarily or doing something without knowing what is uh, the law of karma by what doing what will happen one does not accrue any crime no no that is what that mm. is what i am telling that is exactly what i am telling he does not accrue any crime even if he kills them that is what is the whole message of the right. gita that you kill everybody without the sense of i and mine you will not accrue na karma lipyate nare you know that mm. is what karma ya karma ya pachit somebody quoted right, i think right. i think that so, yeah so uh, mm. like uh, you know there is where you know um, like uh, like there is a difference between jagat and sansar a, a person mm. like a person can get rid of his karma and still i live in jagat and a karma what is karma what is how to how do we uh, how to what is what is what is all about karma karma makes you be in sansar ramanuj has one small uh intervention small point to raise here ramanuja says what professor mahapatra told ramanuja says if god wants he can dispense your karma in dream dream exception of karma is also karma suppose somebody has to experience the death of his son and he is a great devotee of god god can cause this death in dream and the karma is existed they very peculiar peculiar stand point ramam jo text and uh, so many things to speak and But, another uh, thing another thing godav shiv another thing important thing one question was there who to decide what is good and what is bad ha ah, that is a very good thing who to decide that's a very important thing and about <laughs> this you know uh, like you know how do you decide which is good and what is bad lot of discussion about this comes in mahabharata you know like uh, when like i will give you one small example you know when draupadi was getting married 
he comes from panchala where the people marry one girl one boy and these people have come from some other place where the people can marry and uh, many people can marry one girl and he is raising and then uh, question comes uh, what is right and what is wrong there is one line mahajana jena gatah sapantha that is right which is being adopted by the great man who is a great man very good. who is a great man this year also comes the question and i you know i i went through this particular problematic and uh, the, the answer is mahajana does not mean one great person mahajana mm. means the, the tradition accepted by large number of people mahan right. shasu right. karma dhara large number of mahajana does not mean one person it can mean two two meanings are possible for the word mahajana so the mm. large so what is good and what is bad is decided in a context and that is how mm. even western philosophical tradition has been designed itself with consequentialism all these isms we have developed from what that which is going to going to affect large number of people so see the the killing of kauravad uh, is a, a bad action action wise but the result is good so that is that is how the good and bad is being Like Excuse me, uh, 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 Professor yes. Misra. Yes. Uh, yeah, I can remind Plato uh, in his Phaedrus. Uh, there he says, "What is right and what is not, or what is good and what is not good." Shall I ask anybody to tell me so? Because ultimately, it it comes down to me. I am the ultimate decider because I always participate in the social whole. So, what is good and what is bad? i i alone can decide yeah conscience so, self conscience the yeah. conscience of the society as, as, as he has brought that external internal yeah, side of the society yeah very very yes, well yes. taken concept but mahajana would be the supervening factor mahajana is the supervening factor ultimately uh, yes. that is the transcendent authority yes the large number of people accept a way right. is called good don't accept a way called bad there is nothing good and bad by their hmm. face value the same thing can be good in a context so it is a contextual i uh, think right. thank you very much and thank you professor das for this uh, thank, you, thank you thank you for wonderful session follow whenever we have a symposium the people